Hey, what's going on? You know who it is. You know what it is. All right, you guys, peep game. You know, I wanted to finish talking about this because I feel this is very important. Because at the end of the day, like I said, I'm not afraid to call out anybody. I'm not afraid to call out uh, just other people that's with the bullshit. Because at the end of the day, we got to start telling the truth about certain shit. And we got to stop sugarcoating it. And we can't have this inconsistent outrage. You can't sit up there and say, hey, I'm pissed at this dude because he did this. But, Jen, you giving the same nigga a pass for doing the exact same thing that you criticizing somebody else for doing. And we can't show no favoritism. No matter how much we like a dude. And, you know, at the end of the day, you have to call them out and hold them accountable. You could just call them out. You don't have to say, you know, you don't have to disrespect them, but you have to call the bullshit. You can't sit up there and give one person a pass and then overlook something that somebody else is doing, especially when this particular person has more power than anybody. But let's talk about it. Now, with that being said, let me begin. As I said before, I've always been my own person and I call shit like right down the middle and that's what I do. One thing about me, you gonna always get my assessment of something. Don't nobody tell me what to say. Nobody tells me how to say something. I say what I want. And I'm not referring to any particular person. I'm not talking about nobody. I'm just saying I'm me. And I feel like I have the right to say that. Okay. I'm not referring to nobody. But shit just got to be said. And, and that's real. Because at the end of the day, I'm not looking for no favors from nobody. Now, we talked about Pauli Malignaggi. And basically what a, you know, a, 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 a cretin he is. And basically a, you know, piece of piece of trash for him blatantly being a racist. Because he's a racist. But he's the typical type of racist. He doesn't respect a certain ethnic group. But then he wants to make money off of them. But then he sits up there and insults a ethnic group by saying we're delusional with our way of thinking when it's mountains of proof to prove otherwise and what he believes. And like I said, somebody needs to. Well, I can't say that. Can't say it. Can't go that direction. You know, it's certain stuff you can say and there's certain things that you can't say. Now, while everybody is sitting up here. Saying, you know, they going to boycott Showtime and all that kind of stuff. And that's fine and dandy. That's fine and dandy. And they going to say they got an issue with Steven Espinosa and all that kind of shit. That's fine. If you have a, st a problem with Steven Espinosa, then you should. But at the same time, you should also have a problem with another dude's name. I'm about to say. And ask me, do I give a damn if you guys get mad? See, here's the thing. We all know who is the face, or should I say the face behind the scenes of the PBC. And he could shot call too. He could call too. He could make the call too. And he can make the decision too. The same way people are saying, well, Pauly shouldn't be able to work Showtime events because of Steven Espinosa. Well, Steven Espinosa is not black. Okay. So do you really expect him to go all in? Okay. He might he's gonna try to find a way to probably try to keep Polly Modinaji around. But what about the what about the black guy? What about Al Heyman? And once again, I don't hate Al Heyman, but at the end of the day, I have to take him to task and I have to call him out too because he runs the PBC and he has, and don't come with that shit, Al Heyman don't have no say so, yes he do. I mean, every, uh, I mean, y'all just got through praising him for putting together these, these cards saying Al Heyman is a boss. And like I said, I don't give a damn about nobody getting mad if I criticize Al Heyman, I told you. 
I'm not giving nobody a pass if they doing some shit that I don't think is cool. And I don't give a damn who they are and what they look like. If they on some bullshit, they got to get called out. So at the same time, the same way we are talking about Steven Espinosa and Showtime, why don't Al Heyman get Pauly Malignaggi removed? Says Pauly Malignaggi thinks so less of black people. But yet this dude is, a, can, is allowed to broadcast and be a fight analyst on a card or cards featuring predominantly black fighters. Why won't Al Heyman get rid of him? Oh, I get it for the same reason that he has. Kelly Swanson still around. Another racist. Okay. Another racist. Who has said suspect racist shit over the past. I've interacted with that lady. Lady followed me all around the damn the damn stadium in Bakersfield. Like I was something, and, and you know, and I almost cussed her out. But at the end of the day, I was covering the fight for somebody else. If I go too too far and I go all in on her, then guess what? I could have messed it up for somebody else. I couldn't take that chance. So I had to sit there. And then when she finally, you know, when I finally got to my seat, she giving me a lecture like I'm some kind of kid. And then she takes my and and then she takes my seat. And moves me somewhere else. You know she says. Oh well, I'm going to just move you right here. But that was cool. Because she sat me next to the homie champ side. And champ side can verify this shit. Go to champ side's. Uh, uh, channel when you get a chance. Ask him about how Kelly Swanson came at me. When we covered the. Uh, the Peter Quillen fight. In Bakersfield. You know, and I had to sit up there and take that, you know, having some white woman talk to me like I was some kind of like I was some kind of kid giving me a lecture, telling me I need to be on my best behavior. Because keep in mind, the following week was Errol Spence versus, you know, um, Sean Porter. So basically, I, I had to travel from the Bay Area to Bakersfield. So that's like a four hour drive. Then. Go back to the Bay Area. You know what I'm saying? Go back to work. You know, Sunday, Monday, then next thing you know, Tuesday, I have to head back to L.A. Okay? But yeah. That's how Kelly Swanson came at me. And Champ side was just shaking his head. He was like, man, I give you credit for not going off. And I was like, I wanted to. Champ side was sitting right next to me. And I, I just was like, <laughs> for real. I mean, she talked to me like I'm I'm, I'm a, like I was some kind of kid. And then I had and, and then here's the thing. My credentials said that I had all access pretty much except for the locker room. So I pretty much could go wherever I wanted around the, the arena. Except for the locker room. So I I was trying to figure out why was she following me around. And she didn't do that to nobody else. But it is what it is. But that's what I'm saying. Al, Al Heyman has allowed her to still stay there. And she's got into it with a couple of the fighters. She told Fred... She told Fred that stories about black fighters coming up, nobody cares about. Okay? She told that to Fred. For real. You know, and then um, when me, Blue, Fred got through covering, um, got through covering the, uh, the Errol Spence, Sean Porter fight, you know, um, me and Blue was still in the press room. So, you know, Blue getting getting his uh interviews, tallying up his interviews, getting his last minute uh footage. So, you know, Kelly Swanson once again tell us, Y'all need to leave, y'all need to leave. Damn, how much fucking footage do you guys need? We covering a fight. Isn't the whole idea of covering a fight getting getting as much footage as possible? 
So I'm like, this is what we supposed to do. So, yeah. So I'm just like, she, you know, she trying to rush me and blew out the damn building and shit out. Like, man, what the fuck wrong with this? Like, but she don't say nothing to Marcos then. Don't say nothing to none of the other dudes. Don't say nothing to all the other chicks, but she trying, she, she trying to get all the black reporters out of there. So, you know, but Al Heyman has continued to let her work with him. And I know she's been with him a while. She's been with Floyd a while. But at the same time, damn, there's other, uh, there's other, uh, publicists and communication companies that you could work with. I don't even give a damn about them being black. You can get anybody except her. Kelly Swanson has a horrible shitty attitude. A horrible attitude. And then that funny ass voice of her. Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? I need you to be on your best behavior. No, I'm like I said. But still keep giving her chances. Still keep, ain't, 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 ain't checked her. Okay. Now, keep in mind, now, I don't know how true this is. Keep in mind, Pauli Malignaggi said, oh, Deontay Wilder tried to get me removed from uh, covering one of his fights because he didn't like that I said Tyson Fury, you know, won the first fight. So he tried to go public with that. Now, how many times have that happened where you have, you know, certain fighters say, hey, I don't want this person this dude or this woman to cover my fights so you got Deontay Wilder and even if Deontay Wilder did say that hey that's his right don't try to act like it's just black fighters that will want certain people covering their fights okay because we all know how golden boy treat uh black media but then they want all these black fighters to sign with them so yeah I don't know whether it's true or not. And even if Deontay Wilder did, won't Polly removed? Well, that's his right. But then here you have Polly Malignaggi taking it a step further where, like I said, he disrespects a group of people as a whole. Okay. As a whole. And I'm going to talk about that in another video too. Something else that need to be brought up. But yet, he ain't been removed. I don't. I already told you that Al Heyman ain't ain't no pro black person. Only thing Al Heyman care about is green business. He's not for the black community. But then you have a lot of these dudes that go out of their way to you know protect Al Heyman because, like I said, Al Heyman. Then did some shit that ain't cool. Now he giving us these cars. But at the same time. They are certain fights that could have happened. That Al Heyman didn't let happen. Because he talked his fighters out of taking certain fights. Out of not taking title shots. Out of, out, out of not doing business with. You know certain promotional companies. Or not letting certain fights happen. And keeping fights in house. Yeah this is a good PBC card that's coming up. But they're all PBC fighters or at least have affiliation. Now, Jared Ennis, from my knowledge, isn't a PBC fighter yet, but it looked like he's on his way. OK. But that's what I'm saying. Al Heyman could have got rid of Pauli Malignaggi. Pauli Malignaggi shouldn't be working predominantly black fight cards since he has such disdain and disrespect towards blacks. But the problem is, like I said, we we calling out Steven Espinosa, but then we ain't calling out the other dude that could like get rid of Pauli and he shouldn't be getting the pass. So I'm not supposed to say nothing because Al Heyman is black. And he has a dude that constantly disrespects black people. But then at the same time, this is a dude that said that black fighters pretty much have had their time and that the Eastern European white fighters are taking over boxing. 
Okay. And then as far as the so-called fans go, like I said, these fake ass fans, it's the same people that was outraged by what Devin Haney said about he, he won't lose to a white boy. But keep in mind, Larry Merchant said Deontay Wilder, he pretty much said that Deontay Wilder was overrated and he was the last great black hope. But once again, there was no outrage. There was none of this, oh, Larry Merchant is race baiting. But they quick to say black people be race baiting. And that's why I don't talk to a lot of these fake ass fans. Because I call they, they white asses out with they fake asses too. And these non-blacks with they fake asses that pretend to be boxing fans. And I'm going to continue to do it. Like I said, in inconsistent. You know what I'm saying? Fake outrage. Like I said, you just so outraged by what Devin Haney said. But then you didn't say, hey, man, Larry Merchant is wrong for what he said. But then you got these people say, oh, well, I, I don't have a problem with what uh, Larry Merchant said. Well, I don't have a problem with what Paulie said, but you got a problem with uh, what Devin Haney said. But you said Devin Haney was race baiting, but Paulie Malinaji is race baiting. And then when you hear these these Mexican fighters say, oh, when two Mexicans fight, you know, it's going to be excitement at the end of the day. Those punk ass uh, Mexican fighters be trying to take shots at black fighters. And yeah, I said it. It Because I told you, I'm not worried about nobody. And I think that's bullshit. You don't have to like try to take sneak sneak shots at black fighters when you say that. Because there are some, some of the best fights that didn't happen in history been between black fighters. Okay. Hagler Hearns was three rounds of of dynamite okay for real they have been barn burners between black fighters you know real talk so please let's stop it like black fighters don't put put, put together exciting fight Keith Thurman versus Sean Porter was a great fight Errol Spence versus Sean Porter was a great fight you know for real so I'm I'm just saying, cause I know what they be trying to do. Cause I, I I told you, I ain't bite my tongue. I'm gonna call bullshit out, and I'm gonna call everybody out. I told you I ain't worried about no damn super chats. Just cause you drop five ten dollars in, in in a super chat, you think that's gonna silence me? Um, I'm so serious, cause I see a lot of dudes doing that. Oh, well, I ain't gonna really go in on this group of people, cause some, some of them come to my channel and they drop a couple dollars. Fuck that. But for real, this needed to be said about Polly. I know what these dudes be saying. I know what these dudes be saying when they be trying to say that. Oh, when two Mexicans fight, it's exciting. But I, why don't you, why why don't they just keep it one hundred? Why don't they do what Abel Sanchez say, said? You know that black fighters don't say it. Once again, when he said that, no outrage. You know, no outrage. Then you had guys like Michael Montero with his bitch ass uh, sitting up there trying to trying to, you know, wag his finger at at the black community for basically, you know, being offended. Oh, you guys are just trying to race bait. And try, you, I, I can't stand Michael Montero. Oh, and I know you still listen to my uh, my video. Hey, Michael Montero, you a bitch. You a bitch. You a bitch. You a bitch. So, like I said, man, at the end of the day, Al Heyman could have put a halt to some of this shit, too. And Al Heyman, if I'm not mistaken, represents Pauli Malinaji. Why haven't he called Pauli Malinaji and said, hey, Pauli, man, you need to apologize for your comments. And like I said before, people pick and choose what they want to be mad about. Like I said, uh, when somebody say something about us, then it's all good. Us black people need to stop crying and shit. But then, like I said, when Adrian Broner say something, they, they act like this is the worst thing they ever heard. Then these motherfuckers trying to come to black channels saying, hey, man, ain't you going to talk about what Adrian Broner said? No. Fuck no. For what? No. No, I'm not. Because you know why? Because you don't care when somebody say something about us. 
It was only one Mexican that came to my channel that said, hey, man, Abel Sanchez need to go on with that, man. But for real, nobody don't know the history because, like I said, a lot of these people that, you know, you know, uh, believe what Abel Sanchez said don't really follow boxing. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just I'm just keeping it 100. So, what about Muhammad Ali? Joe Frazier, you know, what about Muhammad Ali, Joe Frazier won? What about those three great fights between Riddick Bowe and Evander Holyfield? So I'm I'm just saying I, I could go on. Aaron Pryor, Alexis Arguero. It don't even have to be it don't even have to be like black versus black. Okay, Floyd gave us a great and exciting fight versus Diego Corrales. Even though he whooped his ass, what about Floyd versus Canelo? That was a great fight. You know, Floyd versus Cotto, action-packed fight. And that's funny that they say blacks don't sell, but then Floyd has outsold everybody. So I just don't understand where these people be coming from. But like I said, Al Heyman could have called Polly and said, hey, Polly, you need to apologize. I'm pretty sure he got his number. And he should have said, if you don't apologize, I'm going to get rid of your ass. But ain't nobody calling Al Heyman out. Well, I'm just see, I'm just keeping it 100. Ask me, do I give a damn? Because like I said, I'm going to call it right down the middle. This is your boy Town Biz. I'm out.